today to have with us a special guest. This is Mother Maria from the St. Mary of Egypt convent uh, in Uganda. And she's been visiting parishes in the United States and uh, telling us about the good works that they're doing there. The convent was established in 2001, so you've, been, you've had some time. And I know you've done so many good things there, but we'd like to hear from you. Would you like to tell us about the Orthodox Church in Uganda and your mission there? And if you please give her your attention. Christian, 
And I thought in myself that really this is a true region uh, for my mother church. So I wanted to change the region to become orthodox. And even uh, to change the school also to be in good contacts with uh, orthodox church. So I told my uncle, and the uncle said, I have no money, what like that. Mm -hmm. So me, he told me that me, I have no any problem if you have anybody who can help you, then you can go, I, you have my blessing. So I went and me, what I did, I wrote a small letter and when we went for another competition, I placed it under his door of the head teacher the dog, the head teacher of the school, explaining each and every problem which I had and the reason as to why I want to change the school. So he called me after reading the letter and uh, he told me we'll discuss with my colleagues and we we'll see what we can do. After some days he called me and he told me that we, well, we suggested to give you a big library where you can uh, do something because being a school dependent doesn't mean that you don't be you don't do anything, but you be cleaning the library and even dusting the books because it had a lot of books. I used to do that for almost one year, and I told my uncle that you know I got uh, this chance. They told me to do this and this, and my uncle gave me blessing, so I used to stay at school. So the school had a program, even the church, because it was connected to the church, and it had a, it had a program in every holiday to go in different churches to make bricks, to build the churches, where they had no churches. So we used to go every holiday in different churches to make some activities, even to learn church music, to learn about, about the church, church, everything. So I used to go in a certain parish which was called St. Mary's, dedicated to the Mother of God, and I used to make bricks where about like 15 people, 13 were boys and were only two girls. But the bishop used to come to want us to know that they come and they see how the things are going on, and he used to find us was very, very, very happy and suppressing three girls we are very small, and by then I was like 12, I was going to 13 years. So he used to come and he gave us some things, some little money to buy things, for, like a cake. And after the holidays, we had to go back to school like that. So the, the head teacher one day called me that, yeah, this is enough. Now at least I'm going to ask the bishop, if possible, they give you the scholarship. I was very happy and it was a miracle to me after hearing that even if it, he talked it, uh, it was in it was before having it, but I was very happy with it. He talked to the bishop and the bishop said, okay, I'll give her the scholarship because I don't have a way. And after giving me the scholarship, they stopped me from cleaning the library, but I continued going in, in holidays again to make bricks because I loved to help so much the church. Even if by then I was not of us. So I told Father, uh, who was in charge of the parish, that Father, I would like to become of the source. He told me, okay, there is no problem, but you have to learn something at least to know the creed, to know our, uh, our Father. I told him, I know already our Father, if it is in heaven, they are, I'm fine. But he told me, yes, you have to do some catechism, at least for some few months. I was patient enough, I made some baptism, but I wanted so much, I had love to know church music, like that. So I learned how to sing, even if I was not yet baptized. And we used to make uh, missionary work, going in parishes which had no choir to help the father. So I did that. And after, father made a program to baptize me. And he told me I was baptized in the same church where I made bricks. So they, I was baptized and they gave me the name Anastasia. And from there, and I continued again, I was very happy. Then after some time, I, told, I asked Father Gay if we have monasteries in Uganda. He told 
world we know. Here we have no monasteries, they in Greece, America, it took so many different countries. But it was a dream to me because I've never traveled from anywhere or okay, going out of Uganda. So he told me if you want, then I'll talk to, my, to the bishop and to see how he responds. If he responds positively, then it will be good for us. Telling the bishop, the bishop told father to tell me to write an application as if you are applying for a job. And even put a small photograph on it, passport photograph, sign it that, and father took it to bishop. The bishop read through the letter, and he never responded, responded positively. He kept the letter. And uh, when father came, I, I asked him, and he told me, you know, the, I, told, I gave the bishop the letter, but he told me to wait. Then I told father, OK, we have to be patient now. Let us wait. After one year, I again I asked father, how have you gone with my issue? He told me, I'm going to check on Bishop, on the Bishop. If he says something, then I'll tell you. Again he went, the Bishop told him the same thing. He told him, tell her to wait. So at that time, I told Father that Father just said you have to go together. We can I hear myself what the Bishop says. We went and the Bishop said the same thing. You are young, uh, you first finish up with your ordinary level, after then, we shall see what will, what will happen. So I was patient now. I went back, and after some months, again I went to him, because it was pushing me as if I had something which was disturbing me in my life. Because I wanted to devote myself, and I knew that being in a monastery it is a place of prayer, silence, and repentance. It's why I can exercise too much repentance, let me say like that, and even Connect it's like a paradise. So I told him, I went again to him and I asked him, Bishop, uh, come to know how far you have gone with my issue. And he told me, Yes, you are still young, you know, monastic life, you know that life, it is very hard life. Being, you know, what's being a nun here, we don't have monasteries, they are abroad and they have no access where I can take you up. And he told me to keep on waiting, because if you really want to become a nun, then you have to be patient enough. So I went back. Again, I went to him after two months. I told him, Bishop, I've come back. I told, I told you to, to wait. So I went and told my friend, I had a friend, and I told her that, you know, the Bishop is telling me like this, like this. He told me to write an application, I made it. I've gone to him several times and he always tells me, wait, wait, but I'm fed up this time. So my friend told me, yes, even me, I wanted to become a nun. Actually, we go together and we see, we create a problem, then the solution will come. Then, that time, we went with each and everything of ours, mattress, buckets, brackets, what? And we went to his office to create a problem. We went to him. And he, he, saw us, he saw us from very far. Because he knew I used to go to him several times, and he never, uh, he saw us from very far, but he was not, he, he didn't, his face had no smile, what? And he told us, why do you want? We got scared, and we told him, Bishop, we need only your smile. He smiled, he laughed, and he told us, okay, come. We entered and he told us, okay, this time I will not let you go. And he asked my friend, you also want to become a nun? And she said, yes, we should with your blessing. So he called a certain priest in a certain parish whether it has a place where they can put us. The priest was very happy because they were yearning so much for monasticism to come in Uganda, but nobody could come up. Uh, to set up prospects, to establish or to say to the bishop that I want to start this. And uh, the, when we went to that parish, they gave us a very small room where we used to be for eight months. And it was very small. But we told Father that Father, at, actually, this room is too small. And he said, Yes, I'm seeing, but I have nothing. And we told him, It's better at least you 
to rent something or to find us another small house across to another room. So he, he had to rent another room, to rent another house with two rooms. One, we were using, us, using it as the chapel where we can make our prayers. And another one, we used to use it as a bed, the bedroom and even at the same time the dining because we are only two rooms. We lived there at the house. The house were doors were not both fixed, plus even the windows, the doors were halfway put, water could come, snakes, because the place was too bushy. But we had a very big stick. We used to kill snakes. And we got even four of them we were not fearing. We came to it to the one extent of not fearing because it was a day to day activity, killing, you know. So we used to do that all the time. And we kept on praying. When it rained at night, we had to stand up to remove the mattress until we wait until the rain stops because we had nothing to do. So we discussed among ourselves that really this life is very hard. Maybe we go to the people and we told him that the life is hard. And we said no. Since we want to become nuns,
And then you think you learn also some Greek, you learn sewing, even icon painting. So we went in Greece and we stayed there for one year, another one year as novices. And in the second year, we were tortured as sisters. Me, I was given the name Maria, and the second sister was given the Maria because the church which where we used to go in the parish where we went, it was Holy Transfiguration. So they said, since you have been going in receiving Holy Communion, praying in that very church, let the second sister take that name, and me, I was given the name of the monastery. So from there, when we came back in Uganda, another girl came, and she was also tortured, and was given the name of the same. Other girls came, so now we have five uh, novices, and even the orphans are children, they don't have parents, others, the parents died from the accident, others from AIDS, others, so different kinds. So we had to be with those children, and from there, when we came back, we said that now we stay since we are sisters, this house is not good for us, let us create another problem to the bishop. We go to him and we told him it's now time to get a proper place, a proper space for us. We went again to this uh, office and we told him, Bishop, this time it's not good to be in this place. And he said, okay, you stay here until I get someone who can help you. There was his father who was coming from Rogos, also in, from Greece. He came, we used to be with him to, to look after him, to cook for him, and he was very happy. When he was leaving, he asked us what to give us, and we said, we told him we would like you, if possible, to build us a monastery. So he said, as you know, I don't have money, but I'll do something small for you. I'll put some rooms since we are three sisters, I'll put some three rooms, at least one, to be with her own room. So he built us the small house where now we are living, uh, we have three, it has three rooms and one dining, dining, as it's like a full dining room for visitors, and it's where we get our meals also. So we, when we got those novices, we had to fix ourselves because the rooms were very small, and we had to stay in one room with the three sisters, uh, the five novices, we give them one room, and even 15 orphans, to, rather 16, to be in one room. Fifteen are girls and one is a boy. They are from three years up to fourteen years. That's the range of the, the children. So uh, they built us a small chapel, very beautiful chapel, but very small, but it can contain like 20 people. So it's where we do our services. The schedule of the monastery doesn't change. We get priests at times, they come to make us liturgies in that chapel, small chapel, and in the morning we, get, we do all cross, afternoon we do hours before we go for lunch, and in the evening we do vespers at 6 o'clock, and after vespers we get something, then we go for our prayers because we are going to So we get liturgies at least twice in a month because it's very expensive in Uganda, priests are very far, and you have to transport them if, because some priests don't have means of transport, how they can reach the monastery, because it's not in the town, it's a little bit very far, like 25 kilometers from the city. So they have, when they have to drop, uh, you, uh, if they don't have money, then you have to at least to put something. And the bishop loves the monastery so much. He always comes when he gets time. He does liturgies when it's uh, because we have our monastery the feast days on first April. He always comes. He does liturgy. He stays with us almost the whole day, discussing, confessing, everything. He loves us so much, so much. Our monastery is on six acres, the land where we are. And uh, we have utilized that uh, land, we plant some stuffs. 
like cassava, there is a food which is called cassava. We plant some maize because maize is the day to day food in Uganda almost. And beans uh, for the children to get. So we plant also like some things for Maliki. It's a green uh, vegetables. It's like vegetables. You can eat it as salad, but uh, they call it, that's a nickname, skuma week means, skuma means to push, to push you in the week because they grow very much and if you don't have sometimes something, your, uh, your beans are out of stock, then you can eat skuma to push you in a week. The children love that so much. And actually I'm also very happy because here now where I am, at the monastery, I've learned so many activities and techniques techniques of planting different types of vegetables, even how we can be, um, put something of fertilize the soil, everything of the soil. So I have interest in the agriculture and people love so much, even the children, they do come. Uh, they love so much to help in the garden and even the sisters. So that's how we yeah. are. Thank you so much. I'm very I ask for your forgiveness where you have not got me, and I welcome all the questions. Thank you so much.